and there we go. iOS 11 is officially official. Uh, in case you're wondering what all of the chatter is about and why everybody's kind of excited about it, I figured I'd put together a quick video showing you the best features that are coming out in iOS 11 so you can see what you have to look forward to. One of the biggest aesthetic changes in iOS 11 comes in the form of a new design for the control center. The new control center has a bit more of a bubbly look to it, and it now takes up the entire screen when you swipe up to get to it instead of just half like before. In addition to the full screen, we have these bubbly smaller icons that when combined with the larger real estate means you have a lot more settings you can get to from the control center quickly. You can also go into settings control center and you're able to customize the different options instead of before where they were all just kind of set and what they were. Uh, and now you can even reorder them as well. Finally, you can now also 3D touch on them to get extra options to quickly show up and change them. All in all, making the control center just a lot more functional. The other big change to the UI is the combining of the lock screen and the notification center. Swiping down now on the phone will give you the lock screen, which also now shows you unread notifications, and then swiping up will bring you to older notifications. Also, these are no longer annoyingly grouped by app and show up in much more logical, chronological order. Thank God. Apple added something that I think should be on every smartphone as soon as it's created, a file manager. Now it might seem simple, but being able to find all of the documents, folders, photos, videos, etc., in one place is handy a lot of the time and is frankly one more small step to making the device feel a lot more actual computer-like. Next up, live photos can now be edited to only show the part of the live photo you want to be shown, similar to editing a video on a phone. They can also be set to bounce, which is play backwards automatically when reaching the end of the video, then starting over and so on and so on, or just repeat over and over and be saved as a GIF and then shared. Finally, non-iPhone users can see the glorious live photos that you've taken. In addition to this, portrait mode, the mode that's used to get the extra blurred background that everybody goes nuts for on Instagram, has actually been added to have optical stabilization as well as HDR and also just kind of been bumped up in quality overall. Besides these updates, there were a few updates specific to the iPad that uh, I think are kind of big updates even though they might seem like just subtle changes. The first one is the dock. The iPad dock in iOS 11 now resembles the normal Mac OS dock in that it can hold a lot more icons, up to 13 apps, and can be pulled up by swiping up on any screen instead of just on the home screen like before. It also has a section for your most recent apps and makes it just feel a bit more desktop-like and more efficient for multitasking in my opinion. Another change that makes the iPad running iOS 11 more desktop-like is the new ability to drag and drop. This is pretty much what you would think, but basically if you have multiple apps running on the device, you can actually drag items, like a photo for example, over to the other app and have it seamlessly copied over and placed where you want it. Again, a small thing, but just one more small thing that makes the iPad feel at least a little bit more desktop-like. Uh, and frankly, one of many more things that Apple needs to do to the iPad if they want to keep telling people that it can replace your computer. Now there are a lot more changes that have happened to iOS 11 than what I've listed in this video, but you can click the link below to be taken to my article on my site where I list a few more, but basically these were kind of the biggest, biggest changes. Now iOS 11 isn't a huge update by any means, but it does have a lot of these little tweaks that I think are all kind of steps in the right direction for Apple to make iOS feel at least a little bit more intuitive than it was already, uh, as well as adding a lot of cool features to the iPad that make it feel a lot more desktop-like. There you guys, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. If you want more videos like this, check out my channel. And if you like what you see there, please subscribe. As always though, thanks for watching.